So, question five then, from paper two of the 2014 National Five. There you go, similar shapes. Or rather, mathematically similar shapes. Not similar because they look sort of like each other, but mathematically similar because they are the same as each other. One's just been enlarged or reduced. Their sides are in the same ratio. So, what does it say? We've got these two cylinders, that could lead you astray. The smaller one has got a volume of 750 cubic centimetres. What's the volume of the larger one? Well, three marks. Well, the first thing would be, how much bigger is it? Well, compare two corresponding dimensions. Here we've got the heights. That's 15, that's 24, that's bigger. How much bigger? You could either go in with the ratio, Sometimes you'd state the ratio first of all, but it's important to note that it's the linear scale factor or the linear ratio. I'll put the ratio down first of all. The ratio is simply 15 to 24. Simplify it if you wish. If it was paper one, you may well simplify it to simplify the arithmetic. But here it doesn't really matter because it's paper two, it's calculator. Let the calculator handle the big numbers. So you could say, oh, they both divide by three. So it's the same as five to eight. It doesn't matter. So what's the scale factor? See, that's the ratio. That's just comparing the two sides. Now you've got to decide which way around you're going to use it. What is actually the scale factor? What's the linear scale factor? In other words, how much do you multiply one by to get the other? Well, since it's the larger one I want, I'll have to multiply the smaller one. But these numbers, whichever way around, would give me a bigger answer. So you'd put the 24 on top. So if you do times 24 over 15, you'd work out dimensions in the larger one. If you know the radius in the smaller one, multiply by this, you get the radius of the larger one. If you know the circumference of the smaller one, multiply by this, you get the circumference of the larger one. If you know the surface area of the smaller one, multiply by this, and you won't get the surface area of the larger one, same with the volume, because that's only true for one dimension. If it's two dimensional, you'd be multiplying each dimension by that. One dimension get multiplied by 24 upon 15, the other dimension get multiplied by 24 upon 15, and so when you multiply these together, you're multiplying by that twice, it'd be the square of it. And for the volume, since it's three-dimensional, you'd be multiplying by that factor three times. And that's what you want here, you want a volume. So the volume scale factor is going to be multiplying by that to the power 3, because each dimension is going to get multiplied by that. Of course, you could have had that as, instead of 24 upon 15 divided by 3, you could have had that as 8 upon 5, or even 1.6 as your linear scale factor. But it makes no difference. You're going to be using a calculator. And so, for these three marks, that was the first mark. And knowing to cube it to get the volume gives you the second mark. One mark left, that'll be the answer. So how do we get the answer? What is this volume that I'm looking for? Well, it'll be the volume of the smaller one, multiplied by the appropriate factor, which is 24 upon 15 cubed, because it's three-dimensional. Pop it in the calculator. And when you put it in, you get 3072. Not your third mark yet. You have to have the units in this case, because it's volumes. And so even though you see centimetres, it's centimetres cubed. Now, both parts are required for the final mark. Now, that's the obvious way to do this question, because it's a similar shapes problem. But because these shapes here had formulae that you knew for the volumes, you might have been lulled into thinking, oh, it's a volume question. And, of course, you could have done it that way. It would just be much longer. If it had been the standard sort of bottle question where you don't know the formula, then you would have just gone straight into that, because that's obviously the way to do it. But if you were lulled into saying, oh, it's volumes, so I'll just retract my 750 and find its radius, amplify it to find this radius, and then get the volume of the bigger one, that would obviously give you the answer with a lot more work. Time penalty. So what would you do? You'd say this. Well, what's the formula then? It's pi r squared h, because you happen to know it for that shape. It'd be better off if it was a question where you don't know the formula, then you wouldn't even consider doing that. So how do you get this radius? Well, radius squared would be v divided by pi h. So the square root of that would give me the radius of the smaller one. So now I've got to pop those figures into it. So what is the radius of the smaller one? It's 750. 
and h is 15, so over 15 times pi. So I'll pop that in, and out comes, oh, a nasty number, right? 3.9894 and so on centimetres. I'll just keep it all in there in the calculator just so I can maintain as much accuracy as possible. It's not a final answer. So what's the radius of the larger one? I'll call that capital R. Well, this is where your scale factors in come in. It's 24 upon 15 times bigger than that. So just pop that in. And out comes 6.38307 and so on. Now the first two marks would be allocated here. One for knowing, but not actually getting the answer, knowing how to get the radius. And one for knowing how to get the enlarged radius. Not necessarily the answer. And the final marks for the answer. So I'll just go back to my formula. V equals pi r squared h. Pi times this number here, 6.3807. Well, we've got the 3, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to use the answer button anyway. And so on squared times the new height, which is 24. And putting that in, still maintaining all the accuracy, it gives you 3072 exactly because I didn't do any rounding off centimetres cubed for your final mark again for having both parts. But don't be lulled into doing that when it's quite obviously a similar shapes question where you're going to be using a scale factor with an appropriate power if necessary, squaring the factor for an area and cubing the factor for a volume.